Um, in this part, I'm, I'm going to talk about uh, the design and the measurement and the recent development of kits. So how, how we uh, characterize the kits in the lab? Uh, in, in our system, we usually uh, use uh, uh, um, a signal with, because kits is large array at a f different frequency, Uh, so we will ha um, when the kit is working at different frequency, so we will have uh, an FPGA that can be able to generate uh, uh, the fre the frequency tone at just exactly at the resonance frequency of the kit. Then we uh, we up converted uh, the kit to to up, up converted this frequency to the frequency. And uh, then we attenuated the input frequency to uh, uh, something around uh, minus 100 to minus 70 dBm uh, at the input of kits. Then we, after we, we got the kits, we go through the kits, we, uh, this um, uh, these signals are amplified around uh, 100 dB again to, to gain better uh, signal to noise ratio. And, uh, then, then the the um, the signal is um, home dyned uh, um, converted uh, with the uh, um, second uh, mixer, so that we can detect uh, the different frequency in the um, in the readout system at the same time. Uh, the the input power uh, to to ensure that um, yeah we can see. From here, uh, we can see from here. This is our practical readout system. Uh, it's our uh, system in uh, adiabatic demagnetization refrigerator. So it will will have um, a magnet, and uh, this one is our uh, three Kelvin stage, and uh, this one is our 1K stage. And our, our the, the kit is placed uh, on this uh, 100 millikelvin stage. So, uh, so it can reach one, uh, the minimum temperature here, we can reach something around uh, 40 millikelvin. And uh, the, 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 the low noise amplifier is placed here. The, the, uh, the different stages, especially lower than 3 kelvin, uh, they need very good thermal isolation, so we used uh, the uh, titanium nitride, uh, uh, no, uh, the niobium nitride uh, um, superconducting cable, and uh, to get both better um, conductivity and uh, thermal isolation. Um, this one is the heat switch. Uh, yeah, let's talk about uh, the how how we can cool down to. 100 uh, millikelvin. This is uh, um, how the uh, our ADR works. When when uh, it's when the temperature cool down to uh, 2.7, uh, we apply the uh, magnet magnet uh, to the um, special salt in the ADR, which have the mag magnetocaloric effect. So the 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 magnetic dipole within the um, Within the sort will be aligned. So uh, then we uh, keep the when so we keep the uh, magnetic field constant, and uh, after that we decrease the the magnetic field. In this uh, why so when when the uh, when the magnetic field decreases, uh, the the magnetic dipole here will be um, uh, will not be aligned anymore. So when we break the alignment, this sort will uh, absorb heat. Uh, so we can use this principle to cool down the um, cool down the system to 0.1 Kelvin. So yeah, this is uh, the cooling cooling uh, the the cool down curve. Here we at uh, th three Kelvin we charged the current to uh, 40 amp. 
And uh, at, the, at the same time, the temperature here uh, is um, heated up to 5 Kelvin due to the thermal effect. And uh, then we keep the, when you keep the current around the 40 Kelvin, uh, uh, and uh, that because the current is not charging anymore, so the, the current is remained constant uh, within the superconductor. So it will decrease uh, to, uh, the temperature will go decrease. After it de uh, decreases to uh, three point something, we, we start to cool down the system with decreasing the ma uh, magnetic field. Uh, so we can get reach here something around uh, uh, 100 Kelvin. And the, the minimum temperature we can reach is uh, uh, 40 milli Kelvin. Uh, currently, we can hold uh, the system at 100 millikelvin for about six, six hours, and uh, this can also be uh, improved to um, at least uh, 10 uh, by optimizing the position of the heat switch and, and uh, things here. And uh, currently, we have only one way uh, readout. And uh, uh, in the future, we are going to have two ways, so we can measure two key arrays at the same time. As we have said before, that the the noise of the um, of the low noise ampli amplifier is the deter um, determine the the noise of the system. And uh, um, currently, we are using a, a commercial available. Uh, LNA from low noise factory, it can uh, have a noise, uh, noise temperature around uh, 5 Kelvin. Another important thing is the, uh, is the, the cryogenic cable that is for the thermal isolation. As I have said, uh, so I, we use the titanium, titanium nitride in our system. Uh, uh, and the niobium titanium in our system because the niobium titanium shows both a very good uh, thermal uh, isolation and uh, and uh, mm, low this is thermal isolation and the low loss in, uh, in at a cryogenic temperature. We can see that for other two uh, cables like the uh, copper nickel and the st stainless steel, it will have very high loss. So. The, the G1 will be less than minus one, so the system noise will be limited by the cable here. So, uh, now uh, I will show you an example how we measure the kits. Mm, the, the we used a, a seven parameter transmission model for the for the calibration of kits because we want to get the resonance circle so we can get the, uh, the angle change for the instance uh, photon. And uh, these two terms is, uh, um, is the normalization constant. And uh, this is the time delay of the input cable, as we can see from here. Uh, the cable length from the room temperature to the, uh, to the one 100 millikelvin stage is about uh, one meter, so it's quite long. So the this this tall is the time delay in the cryo start, which is on the order of nanoseconds, and uh, the second this this term is the what we have get in the um, res resonator theory, and uh, when the the this phi describes the the mismatch between the resonator and uh, the feed line. If we put the equal, uh, phi equal zero, we will be able to get uh, the exactly the same uh, expression we got in the previous section. And uh, when the when the phi is not equal zero, it will cause the 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 the, the uh, resonator circle to rotate uh, a bit. We will see later. Uh, here is an example of uh, our measured uh, kits in the crowd in our ADR. Uh, we can see that the the quality factor of the kits is is quite high, which is uh, around uh, 150 kilo, and uh, the 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 internal quality factor 
is something around uh, 6 million, which is uh, extremely high, actually. And uh, we can see from here that uh, the, the resonance frequency is somewhere here. So uh, when, when we, uh, this is if, w if the, um, if the, f this is because the phi is not equal to zero. If the phi, phi equals to zero here, we will be able to, uh, uh, the, the, the resonance frequency will be somewhere here. And also we... Uh, is there any uh, real issue about this, uh, this uh, phase shift? Because this is a constant phase shift that you have to add to the fluctuation that you have to measure. So yes. uh, I don't understand if this corresponds to any issue on the readout system or only a constant value that you have to remove from your residue. Uh, which one? The, 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 the phi? The phi, yes. Ah, it's constant. Yes. It's constant. It's related to the resonator itself. Yes. So when, when the resonator is designed, the phi is constant. It will not be a matter. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> so I think your question was, why is that a problem? Yeah, true, yeah. No, it's no, not. <laughs> there's no problem okay. about yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, here we we measure the, uh, the response of the keep. We can see clearly from here when, the, when we increase the temperature, the quality factor uh, decrease and the, the resonance becomes shallower and shallower. And uh, we can also see from the uh, resonance uh, to, uh, in the um, real and imagery part of the uh, resonator, we can see that the, the, the star part point is the, uh, of the uh, resonance frequency. Uh, so when the temperature increases, uh, uh, no, this is not the exact resonance frequency here. It's the uh, it's the point of the original res resonance frequency. So we can see the trajectory, see the curve here. Um, in this measurement, the the resonance frequency is uh, is somewhere here, for different uh, resonators. So we calculated the um, the how the phase change due to the quasi particle number change in the resonator, and uh, we can see that see from here that when we change the temperature, the phase at the readout point is uh, go go from zero and increase to around uh, 180 degrees, and uh, here we also calculated. How the quasi particle number change with uh, uh, how the, the quasi particle number change will affect the phase change. We can see from here that in the beginning, the the response of keys is almost uh, linear. When when the when the phase exceeds 90 degrees, it becomes nonlinear and uh, uh, the response reduces. Here is the noise spectrum we have m measured. Uh, we can see from here, uh, we the noise spectrum is measured at uh, the lowest temperature, and uh, the the frequency is set uh, at the um, original resonance frequency, and we sampled a period of time, and uh, then we calibrated the data on the resonance circle, and in the finally we can uh, get the uh, noise spectrum of the amplitude and the phase. Um, we can see from here that uh, our our readout system noise is quite uh, high, as uh, it's uh, it's almost uh, two orders high than the previous shown um, uh, photo noise limited kits. Uh, this is this might be because the uh, the signal in our system is not amplified enough, or maybe there is something wrong in the in the low noise amplifier, we need we still need to confirm what's what's going on inside. Um, another another thing we need to measure is the lifetime, uh, because in lifetime determines how what's the uh, res what's the the noise level, and it's an important uh, value for our noise for our kids. And uh, here is how we measure the lifetime. 
we put a LED, uh, optical LED in front of the kit, and uh, we, we moderated the LED with the uh, uh, with pulse generator. And uh, then we syn uh, synchro synchronized the oscilloscope and uh, the pulse. So when the, when the pulse comes, it can detect uh, the, the pulse change. Here, here is an example how we um, detect uh, the pulse, the lifetime in, in our, in our, in our uh, measurement system. And uh, the lifetime is, this, this one is the, uh, the one we measured with uh, an optical kit in, the, in our older cross dot. So the lifetime is something uh, around uh, 15 uh, microseconds. But for aluminum, the lifetime is around uh, uh, 150 to 200. So, but currently, we, still, we are still not able to measure it in our new cross dot. Um, here is, um, is an uh, example, is the calculated uh, uh, noise equivalent uh, power for our kits. Uh, we can see that it can reach something around uh, four, four, to four times 10 to minus 17, um, which is uh, not so good. I think the, the, main, the main improvement may come from the, uh, noise, the noise reduction in the readout system. Uh, the the lifetime here is estimated by the uh, by the typical uh, aluminum. We we have not measured this value, but we are going to do this soon. Uh, here is an, another thing we need to uh, uh, take care when we are measuring the kits. Uh, here we see here uh, when when there is. Uh, um, when the kit is placed on the 100, Kelvin, 100 millikelvin stage, uh, there will be a radiation from 4 Kelvin. For the radiation from the 4 Kelvin, it will be able to break the Cooper pairs in the superconductor. So when we, um, we put the, so we need to um, make the um, photon from the 4 Kelvin as, as, smaller, as small as possible. Here is uh, ho how the people in Astron do it. They put a coaxial filter, which can filter out uh, the signal above 100 gigahertz. And uh, they also use uh, several layers of box on the one Kelvin stage to reduce the thermal load from one, one, uh, uh, four Kelvin. And uh, their measurement shows qu uh, quite a good result that uh, the, especially in the response time, in the resonator loss, um, we can see that with this kind of shieldings, the, the, the quality factor of kits improved uh, almost uh, one order. Another thing we need to take care of is the magnetic field. This is especially true when we are working with uh, ADR because the ADR will generate a very high magnetic field when the temperature is high, and we need to use this kind of magnetic field to cool, cool down. So when there is magnetic field uh, um, present, we will um, we will uh, have um, some problems. This is mainly because uh, the so superconductors is. Uh, uh, can trap the magnetic field inside, especially when it is the a second uh, um, second type of superconductor. When the when the temperature uh, decreases from the high high to low, and across its uh, um, its te uh, critical temperature, there will be certain points that the the, uh, the magnetic field still above its uh, um, first critical temperature below which it will show perfect Messina effect. So in this state, there will be a uh, field trapped and they cannot be removed uh, later. And uh, so we need, to, uh, we need to make the magnetic field as small as possible during cool down. And uh, the other uh, strange thing is that uh, for certain kind of type one superconductor, the, 
the, the, magne uh, the magnetic field still can be trapped within the superconductor. It's, uh, mm, it's not still not clear what's going on. Uh, here is an example of the field trapped within our su superconductor. Uh, when we cool down, to, uh, during our cool down, we control the, the, um, the magnetic field by changing the uh, current when, when we get 100 millikelvin. Uh, so we can get different uh, magnetic field uh, value around uh, our chip. So we here is an example. When, when the magnetic field is around one, one millitesla, uh, the, the resonance can hardly be seen. When the magnetic field is uh, around uh, 0 0.3 millitesla, we can see that the resonance uh, has been improved a lot. Uh, this is, uh, mm, is a disturbing problem in our system, actually. Yeah, this is the mm, threshold for uh, how, the, the, how the magnetic field can be trapped within the um, <coughs> superconductor during cool down. It means that when you have wider, um, when you have wider uh, strip, it will it will be more easily to for the magnetic vortex to enter the enter the um, enter the strip. Uh, yes, when when the when the the width of the strip is wider, the critical field is lower. So we can see from here that uh, this is these dots are the magnetic vortex uh, in the superconductor, which can be uh, imaged directly by the spectrometer at the low temperature, and we can see that the when the width is about 100 micrometer and the there are much more uh, uh, vortex um, trapped within this superconductor. So this kind of vortex will uh, destroy the superconductivity around its, its core. So it will introduce actual loss within the superconductor. And, and what is the width that you use for your piece? Um, in our case, the width is uh, 8 uh, micrometer. So the according to this equation, the critical field is something around the 10 millitesla. So for 300, uh, for, for our in our case, the 0.3 millitesla is much, much higher than, than what we need. Why does the vortex cause so many problems? Is it, I mean, I'm saying the super Cards yes. Just uh, go around the yes. One the, the, the vortex, and, and as long as the vortex didn't move, that wouldn't lead to much of a problem. Um, at the low temperature, the vortex will still be able to move, and uh, the, the lower the temperature, the faster the vortex can move. So we are working at the temperature uh, much lower than the critical temperature. So the vortex is is always moving inside of the superconductor. Oh, so it's not pinned, it's a type yeah. one superconductor. Yeah, yeah. It's very yes. homogeneous. Um, sorry? It's the superconductor is very homogeneous, so the vortices are free to move, you're saying. Mm, I have no idea. Okay. Is there know. any technique to fix the vortex? I didn't find it. Okay. <laughs> I mean, because in type two superconductors, yes. it they're usually just fixed, right? And mm. so they, they hardly no. move. No, in type two, they can move. They can still move. Uh, the lower the temperature, the, the faster the vortex can move. Well, there are impurities, then, and the vortices got stuck. That, mm. That's why with a ah. type two superconductor, but, but when you, you have vortex you, you in get superconductivity mm. when you get the penetration, you know, partial penetration. When you have vortex inside, the current around the vortex <coughs> is high, so uh, it will always cause um, 
the, the material lose superconductivity around the core, whether it is moved or not. So it will su always produce some loss in the superconductor. It, I don't know, but I don't really touch with that that's right here. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, so, so we need to take some measures to do the magnetic shielding. Uh, currently, there are two types of uh, magnetic shielding. One is the higher permeability material. Uh, in this kind of material, the, the magnetic field is concentrated in the, in the material. So uh, the, the, the magnetic field in the, in the area we want to shield will be smaller. And usually, the, the permeability of the material is, is, ar is around 1,000 to 80,000. One of the main drawbacks of this material is that the, the the magnetic, magnetic field, it will, it's, non, it's a nonlinear material. So in this case, the, the permeability uh, uh, of the material will, uh, this kind of material will saturate. For, uh, for example, this, uh, this one is called uh, ASTM uh, material. Uh, it has a saturation current of uh, uh, 0 0.75. So it means that when the field inside of the material reaches 0.7 Tesla, uh, this kind of material will not shield any ma uh, s ma uh, magnetic field anymore. And uh, when the when the when the ma when the field in inside reaches its uh, uh, critical temperature, oh no, no, its the critical field, the uh, permeability of this material will approach to one, which is transparent. And uh, the higher permeability we have, the lower uh, field we can shield. Uh, this is an example of what we use in our lab currently. Uh, we use the um, metal glass, which is a, a foil. Um, so when when the uh, at a, at a four Kelvin, it still can have the permeability of around uh, ten thousand. So it's quite high and uh, very easy to use. So we want to we w first try the, uh, a lot. Uh, so we I have also simulated the behavior of the of this kind of mu, mu material saturation. We can see from here when the when the field is high, which is five tesla in our magnet, uh, these materials are almost transparent, and when the when the uh, magnetic field decreases, we can see that at, at a low temperature, uh, the we can shield a certain uh, certain uh, we can make the shield very effective. Um, the other um, one used for the shielding is the superconductor. The superconductor is mainly used for the shielding for its Messina effect, so it, it can expel the. Uh, uh, magnetic field completely. Um, when and the attenuation is very high, it can be as high as ten to six, and uh, it's um, maybe the highest, uh, most effective material on Earth. But there is one one uh, serious problem for the superconductor is when there is hole inside the superconductor, and we have the magnetic flux in its direction. So the, the flux change in within the hole will cause the, uh, will generate the current in the human superconductor. So in this way, it's superconductor. So the current inside will be relatively hard to remove. So when we remove the external field, the, the magnetic field will be frozen inside and uh, cannot be removed. Um, so we, we also um, made some uh, measurement with, uh, with these materials. F we measured it in two configurations. First, we um, measured the configuration with just the metal glass and the kit here. And we also placed uh, two layers, uh, three layers, actually, two la another layer here. 
So there are three layers of the magnetic field uh, of the shield. And then here, we, uh, another one, we uh, tried a, a few Nalbian foil. foil. Uh, so we put the three uh, layers of the matte glass around the chip, and uh, one additional layer of Nalbian around the, the, of, the, um, of the sample. So because it's made of foil, so there will be certain leakage in the wall, uh, which I will show that it will cause ser serious problem. Uh, this is the magnetic field I have measured um, uh, at the position of the chip. We can see from here that uh, when the when the mag when we have no uh, magnetic shielding, the the magnetic field can be as high as forty milli micro tesla, and uh, when we p place the just uh, two layers of the shielding. Uh, it can show the um, half of the field, and uh, when the when the when the field decrease, the shielding factor will increase. And when we use the the nalbium, uh, we can sh we can see that the the superconductor can show the certain magnetic field, and uh, actually mm -hmm. when the current is low, it's quite good. However. Uh, when we uh, when we uh, de decrease the current, we see that uh, at the same current, the the magnetic field uh, in the in the I at the position of the probe is different, which is mainly caused by the super current in the in the nalbium. So. This this is also um, this is a, a, a bit disappointing, but it is also um, encouraging because we are not using a very good nalbium shield. It's just made of uh, nalbium foils. So we are next step. We are going to uh, order a, a nalbium shield that can can uh, prevent the any leakage around here. So in this case, the the magnetic field uh, can be attenuated, uh, attenuated at least uh, time to minus four, and uh, if this one th still does not work, we may still need to add, a, add a another layer outside of the shield. So we can use multi-layer shield to get this problem fixed. Uh, this is the next part. Uh, Next, I will talk about uh, the, the optical uh, injections of the kits. Actually, Professor Smoot has um, talked about uh, uh, several, um, several examples here. Um, here, here this one is the, um, the usual scheme for the uh, millimeter wave band kits, uh, which is used uh, the, the uh, direct absorption of the uh, uh, meander inductor, and uh, the main Draw the main advantage is that this one can be served as both both as an antenna and uh, the and uh, the absorber. It's very simple, and uh, the main main drawback is that it it is has a relatively rel uh, uh, narrow bandwidth, and uh, it will cause severe um, crosstalk between the pixels, and uh, the other problem is. Uh, the spacing of the meander is uh, is relatively uh, difficult to uh, to to uh, to match the free uh, free space. So we still need to uh, put a, a a substrate and uh, the background reflector to maximize the absorption. And here, this one is the. Um, yeah, the other one, the, the other uh, uh, drawback of this one is the it can only detect uh, the photon in in one polarization. <coughs> uh, this one is the example uh, of how the um, this kind of absorption be adapted to two polarization absorption. Uh, uh, this. 
and uh, to improve the directivity and uh, reduce the crosstalk. Uh, some people, they have some groups that they have started to use the horn to make the uh, signal um, more separated at the focal plane. So they use the horn in front of the kit. So it is, uh, uh, but the absorber still use the, the direct absorption scheme. So what's the frequency for this? This one? Yeah. This is 1.5 terahertz. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, for this kind of uh, this kind of uh, absorption can be also be um, um, uh, designed as the two polarization. So, and another another one is the antenna couple of the kit. This kind of kit can be uh, very wide band, and it can use a variety of antennas in the microwave, and it also. Uh, has dual polarization and uh, may have uh, have low cross polarization, and it can also generate multicolor um, pro detection scheme. But the main drawback of this um, of this uh, of this kind of antenna is it can only be used in the microwave microwave band or the sub-millimeter wave or sub-millimeter wave band. If the fr detection frequency is too high, there is no uh, no sense. It's not. Dip, uh, it's very difficult to make antennas. And uh, here in APC, we are also uh, developing the antenna coupled kit. Uh, we have designed a, a kit with two separated bands with single slot antenna. And uh, when when the when the frequency goes higher, such as the X-ray or gamma ray, the photon energy is too high. So usually the scheme is to um, couple the, the pho photon with the absorber, just as the TS do. Uh, next, I will show uh, the, the design procedure for uh, kits. Um, Kit is actually um, quite simple, so it can uh, can contains a, a, resona a, a capacitor and a resonator and the feed line. So uh, it will be, and it is just a single layer. So it is very easy to fabric design and fabricate. <coughs> so when when we when we design the kit, I will talk about uh, the design of. Uh, um, of a lump element kit, for example. This one is the, first we, we need to know the working frequency. The, the area of the absorber should be on the order of the wavelengths to ensure the, <coughs> the, um, the efficient um, power absorption. The, this one is the, um, it works in the optical band. This is much larger because they want to tune the resonance frequency down to the microwave band. And uh, another thing we need to consider is the uh, optical coupling of the free space photon to the to the absorber, uh, and uh, usually it is modeled as the uh, of the uh, of the transmission line. So similarly, we can use the ABCD matrix, and uh, then we can calculate the um, transmission and the reflection. The power absorbed uh, in the film can be uh, calculated by one minus s one one and square and s two one square. And usually, if there is <coughs> no nothing else, the mm, the the absorption uh, is quite the efficiency is quite low. So when we place the uh, quarter wavelength uh, back reflector here. We can get certain um, uh, power reflected back. So in this case, we it, it seems uh, improved a bit. But uh, when uh, when the when we the maximum absorption occurs when the uh, when the resistance <coughs> of the film is equal to the free space. 
So currently, uh, especially for the kids in the um, millimeter, millimeter wave and the sub-millimeter wave band, they use a, a, a skin to put the absorber on the back of the kids. In this case, they will be able to have a, 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 um, a substrate that can tune the uh, tune the um, f tune the resistive um, how to say the uh, the impedance <laughs> sorry the the impedance uh, of the uh, detector. So in this case, uh, the the substrate is actually acted as a quarter wavelength uh, impedance transformer, and uh, with uh, with a si silicon substrate, it can transform the um, impedance to uh, 30 to 40 uh, ohm. In this case, it will be very easy for the uh, for the matching of the uh, optical signal. Um, so, when the how 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 do we calculate the actual uh, uh, res uh, resistive resistance of the uh, of the film? Because it's uh, it's not uh, completely filled with uh, metal. So the, res the, the, the resistance, effective resistance, is uh, uh, tuned by the, um, the filling factor. So and, it's and also its thickness. Um, the, the minimum uh, uh, the spacing between the uh, meander lines is usually around the 0 0.5. Uh, micro ohm, micrometer, which is limited by the optical lithography, and it can go to uh, higher if we use uh, electronic uh, lithography. Uh, when we when we uh, design the kits, we need to maximize the responsivity of the kits. And uh, here is what we got from the theory of the resonator. And uh, we can see that uh, the first terms are um, design-dependent parameters, which is the volume, the quality factor. And uh, the alpha is a bit special because it uh, related the uh, kinetic inductance fraction. And also, the, also, the, um, also it is also determined by the material. Uh, so here is the um, material. Here, this, this part is the um, parameter determined by the um, by the conductivity uh, by the material. Usually, uh, we can choose a, a high um, kinetic inductance fraction material like like titanium nitride and uh, also uh, aluminum at a, a millimeter wave band. Uh, here. The kit is uh, usually simulated in uh, in Sonet. It's a 3D planar electronic with simulation software. It's com uh, commercially available and uh, it is specialized in planar um, planar um, uh, electro uh, electronic simulation, and uh, which we use to determine the actual resonance frequency and uh, the the coupling factor. And uh, to we we need first uh, to um, after after we discussion discussion here when we have the impedance matching and uh, and uh, the size of the um, of the of the uh, absorber the the connect the inductant inductance part is almost uh, fixed and uh, do not have much room to tune. So when we tune the resonance frequency, we usually tune the the capacitor. In this, here is an example that uh, the the uh, the, kin the inductance of this of this, uh, of this uh, absorber is determined around uh, 20 nano nano Henry, and uh, then we tu we w we need to uh, choose a capacitor that can make the Resonance frequency um, around uh, from one to ten gigahertz. So we choose the uh, a value of zero point four uh, two four uh, pico Friday, and uh, the resonance frequency is set at uh, two point three. And 
this does not take account into the coupling between the um, feed line and uh, the surrounding of the. So when we uh, another thing, another thing we need to consider is uh, when we design the kits, we need to uh, 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 make the coupling quality factor. Uh, higher than the internal quality factor, and uh, we can see from here that w with the fixed uh, internal quality factor, we will have different uh, shapes of the uh, the resonator. When the resonate, when the quality factor of the when the coupling quality factor is higher than the uh, internal quality factor, we see that the depth is too too shallow, and it will be very difficult for us to uh, detect uh, the the uh, resonance. So usually we will make the um, uh, no no uh, sorry this is low it's lower no 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 higher it's lower we usually we usually want to make it lower no not higher when the you, we can see here when the when the coupling is high uh, is higher we see that the resonance is uh, quite shallow and if we lower the coupling. We get a wider, um, wider uh, resonator, but we get the resonance depth um, deeper. So we determine uh, a, a factor called uh, uh, the coupling factor kappa. Uh, when the kappa I kappa is defined, the internal quality factor divided the coupling quality factor. When it's lo sl uh, larger than one, it's called a strong coupling. We will have a deeper and a wider resonator. And when it's uh, when it's equal one, it's called a critical coupling, wh which is the depth of the resonator is uh, is six dB. And when it's smaller than one, we will have shallow and a narrow resonance. So uh, the the so after we determine the size of the resonator, we need to determine the coupling between the the feed line and the the uh, the key the resonator. So we need to tune the distance between the uh, resonator and the uh, the keys. So when the when when we have larger distance, we will see that the 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 width of the um, of the of the keys becomes narrower and narrower, which is because the Uh, yes. Uh, so next, we uh, we will show you how how we tune the frequency. We uh, we 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 change the frequency of the keys from uh, from one point six one point seven around one point seven to two by tuning the different capacitance. We can see from here when we change the different, when we apply different length of the uh, finger, we will see that the the frequency shift goes to higher and higher, and uh, with almost a similar quality factor and uh, width. Uh, the next thing is that when we uh, when we place the different uh, uh, frequency uh, on uh, on the key array. We need to make sure that the the neighboring uh, f resonance frequency should be uh, the difference between the neighboring frequency should be as larger as possible. Uh, this is mainly because when we place uh, two reson resonators with similar frequency, there will be strong interaction between two resonators. So we will make them physically uh, far away to ensure that this kind of inter interaction to be s as smaller as possible. Next, I will talk about uh, the uh, recent development of kids. As uh, as Professor Smoot has said, there there have a lot of uh, projects going on. Uh, yes, this one. Yes, this one is the blast tongue. Uh, yeah, the most uh, amazing uh, feature is that it's uh, mm, dual polarization uh, feature. That makes the detection much much more efficient, and uh, it can also. We can see from here that the 
the size of the uh, array has already uh, reached uh, 2,000. Another um, um, developing of the kit in is that the people in NIST has developed uh, a, a, a technology called the trimming technology. They first uh, tested the resonance frequency in, the, in their first measurement. Then they do, uh, they do their, they, they use the uh, LED array just in front of the kits to determine the exact resonance frequency of each kit. Then they, uh, then they do, uh, then they calculate the, the, the frequency. So, so by based on their measurement and uh, they recalculate the, um, the resonance frequency after their fabrication. So, because this this procedure will uh, include the fabrication defect. Um, so when when they redo the calculation, they <coughs> map their measured res uh, resonance frequency into a new one by by changing uh, trimming the um, interdigital capacitor, which by tuning the tuning the different lengths uh, uh, tuning the different lengths of the fabricated uh, kits. So it's a chip that is fabric uh, uh, fabricated first, then modified based on the first uh, measurement. And they can uh, get the resonance frequency uh, almost, uh, almost uh, evenly spaced uh, in the kits. And which makes the, uh, the yield rate much, much higher, which can reach 90, 97%. Uh, the other the other development is the the parallel plate kits. As we have all seen that uh, most of the kits, uh, are especially the lumped element kits, are made of the uh, interdigital capacitor. However, the recently our collaborator in Paris Observatory, they have some um, huge advance in the um, kits uh, fabrication, especially the deposition of the dielectric. They um, they succeeded in um, produce high quality um, parallel plate kits. Uh, the main the main drawback is uh, this kind of kit. This kind of kit is difficult to develop because uh, in the previous uh, um, case, the the quality factor is usually measured less than uh, one ten thousand, but uh, in our case, it is measured more than. 100,000. And uh, the other advantage is the huge uh, volume reduction in, in the in kits because when you use the, the, the parallel plate kits, the, the size can be um, much, much smaller. This is especially uh, of quite an advantage, advantage in the optical band. So we can um, place uh, uh, 40, 40,000 or maybe 100,000 just in one chip. And uh, the other um, de development here is we are working on a, on a multi-layer kit. We're, uti we're utilizing the proximity effect, which, um, makes the which we place the uh, normal metal close to the superconductor. Um, we have, and uh, so the normal Normal metal can also become superconductor in this way. Um, in our initial measurement, we have see shown seen that the 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 proximity effect heats can increase the um, the re the resonance the uh, fraction of the kinetic inductor, and uh, also it has also shown very very sensitive um, response to magnetic field. Uh, here is our measurement. We, we placed our, mm, our kits in the, in the ADR, and uh, the residual field around the ADR is less than one micro, one mini micro Tesla. Uh, uh, no, uh, it's ar around uh, 20 micro Tesla without any shielding. And uh, in, in, uh, in this measurement, we, we have shielded the, the uh, the uh, magnetic field at least uh, uh, 100 uh, times attenuation. So it means that 
the 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 field field change is within zero point uh, zero two uh, microtesla, and uh, we can still see that it can be detected by our uh, heat. So this is this is going to be qu uh, high quite high uh, responsibility, and if we can make the quality factor higher. And uh, people also have demonstrated a single photon detection with kids in two 2017. Uh, they, they used a very large um, capacitor and a very small volume of the kids in, uh, for the single photon detection. And they have already uh, shown that they can re resolve six photons uh, with the detector, which is uh, quite promising. But uh, the energy resolution still remains low. It's 0 0.22 electron volt, which is uh, corresponding to energy resolution of around uh, 4 at uh, one, 1 1.5 micrometer. Yeah, yeah, here is uh, my conclusion. And uh, Keith has already showed a uh, great uh, simplicity and in design and fabrication. And uh, it shows great advantage in the multiplexing, especially when, when it comes to the optical band. Uh, people have already shown uh, uh, pic uh, arrays with 20,000 pixels with just one chip. And uh, it has already shown that it can has photo noise limited uh, performance. And uh, the, the interdigital capacitors are actually quite mature, and uh, especially due to the trimming technology. And uh, it's ready for uh, all kinds of applica astronomical applications. And uh, the parallel capacitor kit is still de developing, and uh, it is uh, going to be better. Yeah, that's all. <laughs>